Thank you, Sarah. And uh, thanks, to, thanks to Google for inviting us here today. And uh, welcome to, to Dublin and, and Ireland, everyone. Um, I, I'm going to talk about three things really today. One, a little bit about myself and my, my business uh, that I co-founded in uh, 1992. Um, uh, I'll, I'll talk a bit more about the need for innovation, particularly in the parcel delivery uh, business, and a lot about Parcel Motel, which is um, our first venture. We're a transport, very much a tr traditional transport logistics group, uh, but our first venture into a consumer-facing uh, brand was Parcel Motel. And if you're from uh, here from the UK or Ireland, you may have heard about it already, um, but. Uh, uh, I, that's really what I'm going to focus on uh, towards the end of the presentation. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing the uh, Guinness storehouse later on. I'm a big Guinness customer myself. As you can see, I've got the receipt to prove it. And uh, uh, just before I go into my presentation, I'd probably best uh, if we can um, just show you this short video about Paris and Motel, and then I'll talk more about it later in the presentation. Can I have the video, please? Getting started with Parcel Motel couldn't be easier. Firstly, with your mobile phone and credit or debit card in hand, register online with us here on our website or on our Facebook page. It's here where you will select your nearest Parcel Motel location and receive your unique Parcel Motel identification number, or PMID for short. Then the fun part starts as you can begin shopping online. Make sure that no item is larger than 41 by 38 by 68 centimeters and weighs no heavier than 10 kilos. When it comes to the delivery details, you simply enter our address instead of yours. At the beginning of our address, you put your name and your PMID. So later, when we here at Parcel Motel receive your parcel, we can confirm which location you would like to collect it from. So fill in your name, your PMID, Parcel Motel, Unit 5, Mygan Park, Jamestown Road, Finglas East, Dublin 11, Ireland. On some UK websites where free delivery is offered to UK addresses, you can choose to enter our UK address to save on some unnecessary expenses. Again, fill in your name, your PMID, Parcel Motel, 1A McKinney Road, Newton Abbey, BT 36 4PE. Once this is all done, you can put your feet up and relax while we here at Parcel Motel get to work. Your parcel is sent to our centralized check-in area. Here, if your parcel is in good condition, we give the carrier a receipt number that gives them proof of delivery and verifies that we have taken custody of your parcel. Using your unique PMID, we then send your parcel to your preferred Parcel Motel location. With a simple text message containing a unique secure PIN number, we will inform you that your parcel has arrived at your selected Parcel Motel and is ready to be collected. Then, at a time that suits you, pop down to your local Parcel Motel. Key in your phone number, followed by the PIN number we have provided for this delivery, and hey presto! a door will swing open with your parcel inside. No stress, no hassle, no waiting. Parcel Motel, let your parcel do the waiting. Okay, so um, just a little bit about our company. Uh, Nightline would be, these vans would be quite a recognizable uh, brand on the streets of, of uh, Dublin, of Ireland. Uh, established in 92, um, uh, a big part of our business is uh, domestic parcel delivery um, in Ireland, and we've migrated from being a you know a, a B2B carrier. You know, you know, less than five years ago, probably about ten percent of our parcels were B2C, uh, whereas now now we're probably close on half of the parcels we deliver are B2C deliveries, are from online retailers, and the growth in our business. Our business is growing at, at a rate of about uh, twenty percent per annum in the last three years. And most of that growth has come from online retailing. So, can I just ask um, before we move on uh, this slide? We've got a we've got a lot of uh, online retailers present. Can you just can I just have a show of hands? Who's a who's a retailer? Yeah. Okay. 
that's quite a few. Can you keep, keep the hands in the air? All right. So of the online retail community that's here, uh, keep your hand in the air if you think that your average delivery cost, whether it be in your domestic market or internationally, is going to reduce in, over the coming years. I think, I think it's fair to say that most people think that the cost of delivery is going to continue to reduce uh, over the next uh, near future. And the interesting part about that, because if, if, uh, if we were in a forum where there were service providers, uh, if I asked a similar question to service providers and say, who thinks, for example, service providers in the logistics industry, uh, like me, think that cost of delivery is going to increase uh, or stay the same over the next few years, most people would agree that it is. So in a situation where we have uh, downward pressure on price, because most retailers, let's face it, want to offer uh, free delivery, free returns, and where the pressure is on service providers to reduce cost, but at the same time input costs like capital equipment, fuel, labour and so on, where there will be ultimately upward pressure there. Uh, you know, in a situation like that, to me, automation has to play a role when it comes to providing the service. Um, when we founded Nightline in 1992, we were, we were tapping a specialist niche in Ireland, there was a number of uh, graphics, uh, graphic reproductions companies in Ireland that had a market in, in uh, the United States. And we could provide a, a next day parcel delivery service from Dublin to any part of the United States by tapping into the FedEx network, the domestic network in the States. And whether it was East Coast or West Coast, we could get a parcel to, to the USA next day. But um, we, it was quite a, a lucrative niche for us. Um, I had some expertise. I was formerly in senior management in FedEx before I, I founded Nightline. Uh, so I knew how to, how to do this and how to tap this uh, lucrative niche. But that, that whole graphics reproduction business is no longer in existence because of modern technology and, and uh, graphics uh, technology is all done uh, online now as opposed to with the actual materials and proofs and so on needing to move around. So. I suppose you know what I'll be talking about in the next few slides is the need for us, uh, particularly in the service side of this industry, uh, to innovate and continue to innovate, uh, because we're challenged by our retail um, customers to allow them to offer free delivery and free returns, and yet we have to maintain a sustainable and investment-worthy business at the same time. So. I'll use, the, I'll use the example, the comparative example of how cash and how people got their hands on cash, say, back in the 70s and 80s. If you just, uh, you'll note that this is a queue in a, in a bank, probably back taken around, looking at the, maybe the 60s or 70s. And yet, um, the first ATM, commercially deployed ATM, used in the world was actually by Barclays Bank, and it was used outside uh, a bank branch uh, in en Enfield, I think it was, in London. Uh, and that was in 1969. And yet, the first cash ATM didn't arrive in Ireland until 1980, so that's 11 years later. And what brought um, ATMs to a wider market was improving technology, plastic cards technology, and mass production of the equipment itself. So we're moving on now to, in terms of payments, and we've got Google, and we've got uh, PayPal, and we've heard from PayPal and everything. And we've got you know, mobile payments and everything else now. So we've mo even moved on from the ATM itself. But I'd use that comparison to talk about home delivery. And if I was having a, you know, a, Martin, a Martin Luther King moment and saying, I had a dream of a delivery system that was on everybody's doorstep early every morning using electric vehicles uh, with a very sophisticated supply chain. People would probably think, yeah, you're a dreamer, you know? But if you lived in Dublin, and probably in the UK, and I'm not sure about the rest of Europe, but certainly in the USA, um, home delivery of perishable products using electric vehicles was, was an everyday occurrence up to probably the early 1990s. And 
the milk, the dairy industry and the milk uh, delivery industry really failed to recognise the changes in consumer patterns and consumer demand and didn't uh, change and adapt to the change conditions in the marketplace. So it's a, now, sadly, a thing of the past. But if you think about it, they had a very sophisticated supply chain. They were able to have a perishable product uh, on everybody's doorstep every morning using very sophisticated uh, techniques, and yet all of that just fell away. And if we had that available to us now, if you think about it, uh, it would make home delivery probably a lot more easier and a lot uh, less low cost than it is today. So I'm bringing the, the comparisons onto the, the, the whole issue of handling parcels and parcel collection, and you can see those queues. There's a similarity there between uh, the queue and the bank back in the 70s or whatever it was. And just to, to change slightly for a moment just to the challenges we face in Ireland. Um, online retailing in Ireland and uh, online shopping is increasing at 20% per annum as it is elsewhere. Um, we have a population in Ireland of about 4.6 million, of which about 2 million, 2.2 million, are online shoppers. This uh, map just shows you the distribution of the population in Ireland. About 2 million of the population live in this red area here, and the rest are distributed. And the red areas just show where population concentration is, and density is just about, uh, just reaching about 100 people per square kilometer. Um, by comparison, in England, if you, excuse, if you exclude Scotland, Northern Ireland and Wales, the population density is 386 people per kilometer. So it provides us with uh, some distinctive challenges uh, in terms of servicing the Irish market with um, uh, online uh, delivery of online retail uh, purchases. And of course, people that live in these areas out here are happily shopping online because they don't really have the same level of high street availability that people living in the major cities like Dublin would have. So just to summarise uh, where, where I've taken so far in this journey, um, if we're talking about the, the, the problem that we were faced with and the challenges from our retail partners, um, the Irish consumer really was a limited availability of products. A lot of websites don't ship to Ireland. Um, Martin alluded to uh, Clark's earlier on. And believe it or not, Clark's don't actually ship directly to Ireland. They, uh, they do through Amazon Marketplace and so on. But uh, there's a lot of major retailers in the UK, and lots more smaller ones, who don't actually ship to Ireland at all. Uh, Google Play Store, for example, uh, have limited availability in the products they sell into the Irish market for various reasons. Uh, maybe the, you know, the market might be too small, or the products, uh, you know, they, it might be just too small a market for them to uh, concentrate the marketing efforts on. Um, and then you've got the usual uh, issues with delivery, waiting, queuing, missed deliveries, and so on. Um, Cross-border complexity, particularly, particularly for smaller retailers and UK-based retailers. So, for example, if you're a smaller UK-based retailer uh, and you want to send, uh, uh, sell something into Ireland, as soon as you've done that, you're probably into having to make a, an interest at return. You've got regulatory requirements. might have currency considerations and so on. So it is an inhibitor to a particularly small and medium-sized UK retailer selling into the Irish market. Um, we also have a unique problem in Ireland in that we're the, I think we're now the only OECD country, although this is being addressed by the Irish government, that doesn't have a postcode system. So 60%, for example, of rural addresses in Ireland are not unique. So it makes uh, people particularly difficult to locate and addresses to find and expensive. Um, so the solution that we came up with with Parcel Motel was to try and offer, using our virtual address, uh, access to UK retailers, uninhibited access to all UK retailers. Um, and most UK retailers now, as we know, will offer free delivery and free returns. So uh, they could uh, you know, take advantage of lower, lower cost uh, delivery. And of course, by using these Paris Motel terminals, uh, we take away the waiting and queuing and so on. More convenience for the consumer. And for the, for the retailer, we were opening up cross-border trade uh, without the regulatory inhibitors and the currency uh, issues that they might be facing. And um, 
for us as a carrier uh, to, to service a Paris Motel terminal, I'll show you those in a minute, it's obviously cheaper for us to do that than to try and find uh, possibly a rural residential address that doesn't have a postcode. Do we have anyone from Poland in the audience? Very good. So you're familiar with these machines? This, okay. So we bought this hardware from InPost, a Polish manufacturer and a great innovator and entrepreneurial business themselves. Uh, InPost are the largest uh, private postal operator in Poland. And um, this type of a solution was originally developed by Deutsche Post DHL and the Kiba company from Austria. Uh, in, and the first of them were deployed as packet stations in Germany in about, the, about 2002. But now other manufacturers like InPost have come into this market and are making this type of equipment. Um, at the last trade show, international trade show I was at in Vienna, uh, I think there was about 10 companies marketing this type of equipment. When I met InPost for the first time at the same trade show in Copenhagen in 2010, there was just Kiba and InPost selling them. So if you go back to what I was talking about with the ATM machines, the first commercially deployed ATM being in 1969, and then uh, the wider, wider distribution of ATMs not really occurring until the early 1980s. I think a similar thing is happening with parcel delivery in that we've had a 12-year you know, uh, development period where the technology's improved, there's more manufacturers moving into the space, so mass production is coming in, and this type of equipment is getting cheaper and easier and more available. Um, these are just some of the locations. This one here on the top right-hand side actually is not too far away from here. It's around uh, Grand Canal Dock, and a lot of the high-tech manufacturing um, workers around this area uh, uh, use that machine. It's one of our busiest machines in Dublin, actually. Uh, and these are typically located at petrol stations and convenience stores around the country, and they offer 24-7 access um, and ease of use and convenience for, for consumers to, uh, to access their parcels when they put them in. So just to, to reiterate, the parcels come to us. They could arrive at either one of two, two receiving centres. One is in Belfast, which is in Northern Ireland, which is part of the UK, and the other is in Dublin. About 50% of our customers use the Belfast address because they're accessing UK websites and behaving as a UK consumer. The parcel is delivered to our site in Belfast, and then we take it. We know from the customer's registered details uh, which parcel motel location they want us to put the parcel in. And we take the parcels during the night and put them in there. And then we send the customer a text uh, to note on an email to notify them that the parcel's available for collection. So it means that each one of these has up to 80 individual compartments. So during the night, so it's counter-cyclical. Counter it's not a daytime activity. We can visit these uh, parcel motel locations, put the parcels in, up to 80 at a time, as opposed to driving up 80 individual residence streets during the day. And then we send a text message to the consumer with a PIN number to come and pick up the package. Around the same time that we uh, launched Parcel Motel in July 2012, Bufferbox, a Canadian company, um, came up with the same, pretty similar idea, actually. It was launched around the same time. Um, and they launched in Toronto with 10 locations my understanding is they have 10 locations, three employees, no revenue stream. Uh, and uh, within a couple of months, they'd been bought by Google for $17 million. So I waited for the phone to ring. <laughs> and, when it, and when it didn't, uh, we decided uh, that by that stage, we, we'd, uh, no, to come back to a serious point, we'd had lots of discussions with online retailers. Amazon came to Dublin twice to talk to us about these machines, because you know you got Amazon Locker in other markets. Um, we had a lot of discussion with online retailers about, we, we originally thought that this was a retail proposition, that we would speak to the retailer, and the retailer would use this as a way to get parcels to their customers. But once we, we got into those discussions, and the, re the retailers realized that there was going to be some integration work, that they might have to make some change to their website. 
and that con the con it, because it was so new, consumers might accept it, so it was kind of risky. We knew that this was going to be a long conversation with retailers. Um, but we knew, obviously, that we were onto something when we could see that Google had taken such an interest in Bufferbox in, in Canada. Um, so what we did was we immediately changed our strategy to appeal directly to consumers to use this as a service. So when um, the parcels come to us and we put them in the parcel hotels, we charge the consumer every time to use that. It's like uh, iTunes, they register with a credit card and every time we receive a parcel for them, we charge their credit card or PayPal account and uh, we put the parcel in there. So we changed our strategy to be a consumer facing strategy and we launched the, uh, we, we, uh, launched the idea of the virtual address in Northern Ireland. So for European visitors, this part of Ireland is Northern Ireland, which is actually part of the UK. So that's actually a UK address, albeit it's on the island of Ireland. And we have a receiving centre there. These indicate just locations around Ireland where, uh, where we have Paris and motels located. So to illustrate this, there's about 2 million online shoppers in Ireland. 80,000 of them now have a personal motel account. That's about 3 to 4% 3 to of the online shopping community in Ireland. 200 new uh, online retailers, or online customers, sign up to use personal motel every day. So this number is growing by 200 every day, seven days of the week. And what at least half, if not more, of those customers are using the service for is to use this address in Belfast as a UK receiving address so that they can shop here in an uninhibited way with any, retail, uh, any retailer they want and a wider range of products and quite often at a lower cost. So for example, uh, some of the Nexus products, the Google Nexus products, weren't uh, launched in Ireland, but a lot of our Irish customers were able to buy them from the Google store in the UK get them delivered to Belfast, and we subsequently delivered them into parcel motels around the country. Um, it's quite an interesting phenomenon because um, we didn't put a huge marketing budget behind this. Um, and almost now, the 200 new that sign up every day are just doing it uh, through word of mouth or through online research. And um, we get all, all sorts of products every day shipped uh, to uh, parcel motel through here. So it's everything from cycling equipment to uh, clothes, fashion garments, and so on. Some research done by Mintel, I think it was, um, in eight, eight categories, uh, 100 products across eight categories, 75% uh, of product searches done in Ireland took the shopper, the consumer, outside of Irish websites. Um, and IMRG, uh, a UK uh, data collection body or research body uh, say that the online retail merchandise market in Ireland is worth about 4.6 billion euro. And if you think that 75% uh, of those people searching online are actually searching on sites outside of Ireland. So it's quite a big market potential, particularly for UK retailers. But the principle of virtual address, we're quite excited about because we think that this is an idea that could be used in other markets. For example, uh, we're currently researching the possibility of having a, a German parcel motel site where German consumers could use our UK delivery address and then we could find some way of forwarding the parcels to German customers and maybe injecting them into the postal system in Germany or something like that. We don't actually need the parcel motel lockers there, there to do that, to avail of the online or to avail of the cross-border opportunity, op opportunity that exists. Um, one of the challenges that this has presented us with is that, first of all, this postcode up here, BT36, 4PE, BT um, now has 80,000 people using the same postcode. So we noticed, for example, that some UK retailers blocked the postcode for, uh, for fraud reasons because they could see different names using the postcode. So when we were contacted by customers, we contacted the retailer and we explained to them that 
in order for a customer to use this postcode, they had to register with us and we, had to, we put through some basic fraud checks using the Experian products and so on before the customer could actually use the postcode and use our service. Most of the retailers that we approach and explain this to them, um, they unblock the, the, the code, uh, this postcode, and it will allow parcels to go through to here. Clarks, for example, would be one would be very enthusiastic about Paris Motel because uh, they don't sell directly into the Irish market, but it's a good way for them to access Irish shoppers by using the virtual address in Northern Ireland. The other the other challenge that it presented for us, excuse me a sec, is if you think about it, when these eighty thousand uh, online shoppers buy on UK-based websites, the UK retailer is assuming that they're sending it to a UK-based consumer. Makes sense. So for returns, for example, when we then take the parts from here and bring it down to a customer in, in the Republic of Ireland, the uh, customer opens the parcel and they've got a, a UK prepaid returns label. So to, and then we so what we had was first of all we had the euphoria of the customer saying this is so good because we've we've managed to save money and we've got a better range of products but now I want to return something how do I do that so what we did was we made arrangements with Royal Mail and Collect Plus which is a very big uh, return service in the UK so now we facilitate consumers to use us in the reverse so we can take a parcel with a UK prepaid returns label back across the border to Northern Ireland and inject it into the UK carrier that's been originally selected by the retailer at that point. These are just some of the challenges that we faced, but at the same time it hasn't stopped the growth and the interest in the, in the method of buying from the UK. So if you're here as a, as a UK retailer, um, you could already be uh, sending to this address. I spoke at a conference in London, a major uh, e-commerce delivery conference in London last week, and a number of the retailers got checked the postcode while they were there, and they were quite surprised at the level of orders that were go actually going through to it, which they weren't identifying necessarily as an export sale. But what they were doing was leveraging their domestic delivery network to access the Irish market. And if you like, the customer in Ireland is subsidising part of the journey from, uh, you know, subsidising the UK domestic delivery charge to get the parcel further on into the Irish market. Uh, I've just spoken about returns there, so again, uh, we've, we've launched, uh, now that we've got 80,000 customers interested in Parcel Motel, of course, the retailers are now interested in saying, how do we integrate with this? So last October, uh, Littlewoods Ireland, which is a big uh, online retailer into Ireland, probably one of the biggest, uh, did it, we did it integrate with them. So they're actually offering consumers direct access, uh, free returns by using Parcel Motel. So just some of the customer feedback we got. My favorite here is Parcel Motel, you just made Amazon better. <laughs> and I suppose interestingly about 30% of the volume that we get coming through the virtual address in, in uh, Northern Ireland is our Amazon parcels. And about another interesting number, about 53% of our uh, registered users are uh, Gmail um, email address, sorry, Gmail account holders. Um, Another application that has been quite interesting for the, for the terminals themselves, just to go back, these personal hotel um, delivery terminals has been to the corporate, uh, you know, as, a, as corporate, to, to large corporates who have an issue now with, where they've allowed employees, say, to receive parcels um, at work. So if you take it, like Apple, Apple Computer have a campus in Cork, which is the second largest city in Ireland, and they have, uh, I don't know, 3,000 employees there who were all uh, having parcels delivered to the Apple mailroom uh, on the campus. And this was causing uh, you know, administrative and uh, you know, overhead issues for, for Apple. So what we've done was the approach this and we put a parcel motel terminal on the campus in Apple 
and the employees are now using this instead of the company mailroom. Um, we've also just recently installed one in, at the Intel campus, which is at, in the west of Dublin, uh, where there's about 5,000 employees and contractors using it. And now the company is uh, telling the employees, and we've started a, a corporate group scheme so that we can, um, they can divert the parcels away from the company mailroom. So you can see here, these are, these are genuine tweets that we got. Somebody said, save 20 euro on delivery from the UK. Um, returns, uh, dropped off my return Friday, got my ref refund on Monday. Because, because we're operating continuous flow back across the border with returns parcels, we're not consolidating them and sending them on a periodic basis. Customers are seeing their credit coming back on their credit card from UK retailers a lot quicker. Just in terms of, I'm um, wrapping up now, just in terms of some of the future plans we're, we're thinking about, and I'm hoping that, you know, already there's people in the audience thinking about, well, how, how could this work better or whatever, so I'd really like to hear your ideas about where we can take this. We're really ambitious to take it into the international uh, market and hopefully, certainly within the EU and develop the idea further. Um, but for the retail partnerships, definitely, uh, we've another major UK online retailer who's come on board to offer to use Paris Motel for returns. Uh, we'll be announcing that later this month. Um, direct integration now is, with retailers has now become more possible because the retailers are now more interested now that we have 3% of the online shopping market in Ireland using the service. Retailers are obviously a lot more interested in integrating directly. Um, we're also building a very valuable database. Um, most, about 70% or more of the, of the registered users of Paris Motel uh, opt in for marketing messages. And about 40% of the overall users opt in for marketing messages and marketing messages from third parties. So we're building a very valuable database. Uh, we brought Experian on board to help us ensure that we're structured the database properly so that it can be, it can be monetized. And we're using Mosaic and some Experian tools so that we can uh, analyze and uh, give good marketing information about the uh, registered users of Paris Motel. Um, the next phase will be because in some rural vi villages and in city centre locations it's difficult to put in a full bank of Paris Motel lockers. Uh, in rural villages it just, you know, where the population is, could be a couple of hundred people, it just doesn't warrant the investment. And in city centre locations like where we are now, it's actually finding the locations to put Paris banks of lockers. So we'll be adding an in-store location, uh, an in-store option, so that will be an over-the-counter transaction at a retail store. That will be coming later in the year. Uh, so par customers can collect and drop off parcels at a store without necessarily needing to use a Paris Motel locker. Cross-border expansion is definitely on the cards, <laughs> something that we've seen, uh, we've got a lot of interest in, and we think that uh, Werner Steig from the European... In, uh, EU Internal Markets Commission has been uh, given a project to expand uh, cross-border commerce within the EU. So where we have very mature markets in the UK, Germany and France and so on, cross-border uh, transactions between those countries, um, the EU uh, want to stimulate that demand. And Werner Stang invited us to Brussels to talk about Paris Motel and the principle of virtual address because uh, he thought that was a good idea and was, was a way to stimulate cross-border uh, transactions in terms of e-commerce. Um, but one of his key statistics is that 60%, 60%, this is from Werner Stang, the Internal Markets Commission, of all e-commerce in the EU is conducted in the UK, which is a very mature market, as we know. So that would indicate to me that there are a lot of shoppers in the, in the EU that want to shop in the UK. And I think that there's potential there for us to facilitate that using a similar device that we've done in the Irish market. Um, just some of the ideas, and uh, that's really it. Any questions? Thanks very much.